If you don't want to get blindsided by the hidden costs in Disney World, you are in the right place. Let's look at how much it really costs to go to Disney World this year. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. Now, one of the most stressful parts about planning any kind of Disney trip is figuring out how much you're gonna need to save to feel like you can do everything you set out to accomplish during your big vacation. And that's exactly what we're gonna help you achieve today. We're gonna break down some different price points for different trip budgets so you can pick and choose how little or how much you'd like to save. Keep in mind that many of the prices we'll be talking about today are subject to change, which is why lots of them will be discussed based on a range rather than a specific price point. This is especially true when it comes to the travel section of the video, which, not to tease you, but that completely shocked me and more than likely it's going to shock you too. But before we talk about travel, let's make sure you know where exactly you're traveling to. Hotel prices range and you're going to find very different cost points around Disney World, drastically different really. So it's all going to come down to what you want to prioritize in your hotel. Do you plan on making your resort hotel part of the vacation or just a place to crash each night? We looked into price ranges for all the Disney World resort types, including values, moderates, deluxe, and villas, as well as some of the good neighbor hotels too, which work alongside Disney to give guests a cheaper price point for their rooms, while still providing similar benefits that you'd receive if you were staying at a Disney-owned hotel instead. Now, prices vary depending on when you stay. If you pick a date around back to school season, like August to September, prices for rooms will be knocked down by a couple hundred bucks. But if you pick a date around the holiday season, like November, December, the exact opposite happens, and you're gonna see prices for rooms go up by a couple hundred bucks. So for this example, we're trying to land somewhere in the middle, and we'll be booking rooms for a family of two adults and two kids around a season that's starting to pick up in numbers, AKA the start of summer vacation, from June 5th to June 11th, a week-long vacation. Disney's value resorts are, well, they're actually pretty self-explanatory. They're gonna be your more affordable option when it comes to choosing a Disney resort, for the most part. The absolute cheap the cheapest room option you're going to find across all the Disney World resorts will be over at All Star Sports. The standard room there will cost you around $185 per night. Yep, that's the cheapest price room right there. Again, if you book a room during Disney's down season, this price will drop. But no matter when you book this room, rest assured that even though you're paying less for it than you would any other Disney room, you're gonna still have access to the Disney Resort Guest Benefit Early Theme Park Entry. That's gonna let you enter any of the parks on any day, 30 minutes before they open for everyone else. The other all-star resorts, movies and music, tend to be around the same price point, except if you choose the all-star music family suites. Not only is that suite type the cheapest suite on property, but it's also got lots of space to spread out. We're talking a living room with two Murphy beds, two full bathrooms, a kitchen space, and a master bedroom, all for around $408 per night. Disney's Art of Animation also has family suites with different Disney animated movie themes featuring Cars, The Lion King, Finding Nemo, but these suites are more expensive than the all-star music ones. A Lion King family suite, which can sleep up to six guests comfortably, will cost around $565 per night. Art of Animation also has standard Little Mermaid themed room options too, priced around $2.72 per night, but that cut cost will also cut a lot of roominess you'll receive over at the suites. One of the best reasons to stay at Art of Animation is that it sits directly on the Skyliner route, which will give you an easygoing sky gondola trip right over to Epcot and Disney's Hollywood Studios. And you can easily get to the other Skyliner area resorts like Disney's Riviera or Caribbean Beach. But the cheapest resort on the Skyliner route is actually over at Disney's Pop Century. You can get a preferred room here, which will put you much closer to the Skyliner station or the resort's lobby for around $245 per night. Now, moving on to moderate resorts. These offer mid-level amenities at mid-level prices, sort of the Goldilocks of Disney World hotels. But don't let the moderate title fool you. Moderate resorts can provide some of the best Disney hotel experiences at a much more affordable price point than the deluxe resorts can offer. Some of the cheapest moderate rooms can be found over at Disney's Port Orleans French Quarter and Riverside, which are both just a boat ride away from the Disney Springs Shopping District. A standard room at the French Quarter will cost you around $2.91 per night. That's right, a standard room here is only a little bit more than a standard room at Art of Animation, and you'll be within walking distance to beignets when you stay here. If you want to get a little fancy and embrace your inner prince or princess, the Riverside Resort has royal guest rooms available for you to book. These are Disney royalty themed, with photos of Disney princesses on the wall and touches from their movies scattered throughout the room's decor. One of our favorite touches, the headboards light up with fireworks. Now how's that for a cherry on top? 
Royal guest rooms are priced around $370 per night, which when you look at some of the other highly themed rooms on Disney World property, really isn't too terrible of a price for Disney standards. You'll see what I mean soon enough. Jumping back over to the Skyliner Resorts again, Disney's Caribbean Beach has standard rooms with an added fifth sleeper Murphy bed for around $309. And later in 2023, you'll also get the chance to book a re-themed Little Mermaid room here too. But this isn't the same type of Little Mermaid room you'll find at Art of Animation. These rooms replace the former pirate-themed rooms in the resort and will add touches of new under-the-sea artwork, brighter decor, pastel colors, and a fifth sleeper bed that will allow each room to accommodate more guests. No price ranges are out for the new styled room yet, but we'll let you know just as soon as we hear about a future price point. Should be around the same as those royal rooms though. If you're looking for a lot of room for your group, as well as some extra privacy away from other resort guests, you might want to choose to book a cabin at Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort. These are also considered moderate resorts. The cabins will help you rough it in the great outdoors without really roughing it. You'll have an outdoor deck, a picnic table with a charcoal grill, a bedroom with a queen bed and bunk beds, a full bathroom with a tub shower, a full kitchen, a living area with pull-out sleeper sofa, and a dining table that seats up to six family members. All for around $478 per night. Now let's look at a moderate resort with some major deluxe features. Disney's Coronado Springs houses the Grandestino Tower. This is a place with upscale food options, rooftop views, elegant rooms and suites. Other amenities include the building's state-of-the-art fitness center, conference spaces, and connections to other areas of the resort, as well as access to salons. For a standard room here with a view out across the water, prices can be relatively low, ranging around $394. But Grandestino is the only moderate resort that offers a deluxe suite stay with club level access. This means that guests staying in these rooms have access to the resort's Kronos Club, which is an exclusive, relaxing space that serves complimentary refreshments and breakfast, snacks, drinks, and desserts all throughout the day. But just because Grandestino is a moderate resort doesn't mean the club level rooms are going to be a steal or anything. You're still going to have to pay around $815 per night to stay in those. If you want a much cheaper Coronado Springs room option, step outside the tower and check out the casitas or the ranchos or the cabanas around the older sections of the resort. A preferred room in those areas? They're going to cost you around $356 per night. And the deluxe resorts. These are the top tier amenities, the top tier prices at Disney hotels. They also offer perks such as awesome pools, top-rated dining, and very easy access to the parks, including walking distance from many of them. Not to mention, these are the only Disney World resorts that'll give you the extended evening hours benefit, which will let you stay in select parks on select nights up to two hours after they close for everyone else. Typically, you'll find extended evening hours for Epcot on Mondays, Magic Kingdom on Wednesdays, and Disney's Hollywood Studios on Thursdays. Now, I'm not gonna go over every deluxe resort on property, cause there's a lot of them, but I will cover the vast majority so you can get a good idea for how pricey deluxe resorts can truly be. But some of these price ranges could surprise you. A few of them on this list actually have some cheaper price points than some of the moderate options. But let's start with the bougiest of the bunch, Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa. This has some of the most expensive room options on property, and that's not just because of its Victorian style atmosphere. Grand Flow is located on the monorail loop, meaning you can easily easily get to other monorail resorts like Disney's Polynesian Village and Contemporary Resort, as well as Magic Kingdom and Epcot. If you book a standard garden room here, expect to pay around $776 per night. But if you want to make your stay just a little more grand and have a view of the Magic Kingdom right outside your window so you can watch the fireworks over Cinderella Castle every evening, then you're looking at paying $945 per night instead. Keep in mind that Grand Floridian is currently working on updating their rooms and lobby to take on a subtle yet classy Mary Poppins theming, which is how they remodeled the Big Pine Key last year when transforming the rooms into Disney Vacation Club Studios, which tend to range in price between $700 and $1,200 plus per night. Speaking of DVC Studios, that's Disney Vacation Club, by the way, you can find more DVC Studio rooms over at Disney's Riviera, which is the most expensive resort on the Skyliner route. A deluxe studio here with a standard view will cost you around $681 per night. Okay, let's look at some of the cheaper deluxe resort options now. At Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge, you can get a standard room for around $482 per night. Yeah, we're back in moderate resort prices, right? That's nearly $300 less per night than what you'll get for a standard room at Grand Floridian. 
And if you put in a request for a partial savanna view room during the time of your check-in, you might also be able to see over 30 species of African wildlife, including zebras, giraffe, gazelle, flamingos. Seriously, there's a lot to see here. If you want to guarantee a full savanna view room where you can see animals from your balcony all the time, you can always specifically book one of those instead for around $679 per night. You pay top dollar for those animal friends. Now, fun fact, did you know it's possible to potentially get a cheaper club level room at a deluxe resort versus what you can get at Grand Casino Tower? Over at Disney's Wilderness Lodge, you can get a standard view club level room for around $745 per night. That's gonna grant you access to the private Old Faithful Club. However, if you just want a standard room at this resort, your price will drop down to around $490 per night instead. And now for the most expensive deluxe resort stay of them all, Disney's Galactic Star Cruiser. Okay, granted, it's technically not a deluxe resort. Rather, it's described by Disney as a part live immersive theater, part themed environment, part culinary extravaganza, part real life role playing game, and so much more. That was a quote unquote right there. So basically, you're going to be thrown into one big Star Wars choose your own adventure over a two day, two night stay, complete with a port of call to the planet of Batu, aka Galaxy's Edge in Hollywood Studios. But this interactive experience is going to cost you the big bucks. Expect to fork over around $6,000 for this one. Now, this price is similar to what you'd see for a Disney cruise in the same vein as a cruise. Star Cruiser even has meals and meal vouchers included with that price tag. And you'll also receive a Halcyon pin, which will serve as your one-way ticket for skipping over the massive lines for Rise of the Resistance and Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run on your port adventure day. But if you choose to go the Star Cruiser route, those two days will be packed with Star Cruiser activities and Star Cruiser activities alone. So if you're wanting to use this time to go explore the parks, this is not the route you want to take. You can learn more about Star Cruiser from our Truth About Disney Star Wars Hotel video on our DFB YouTube channel. So what's the difference between a Disney hotel room and a villa? Well, a villa is the term that Disney uses for its timeshare, Disney Vacation Club properties. Deluxe villas give you furnishings that are generally a little bit more on the higher end. You'll also get larger square footage in some of these rooms when compared to standard hotel rooms. There are amenities that can make your trip easier and more convenient. In DVC villas that feature one to two bedrooms, you'll find full kitchens, in-room laundry appliances, a large living room, and a dining area. All of these can be huge assets for a larger family. Most DVC rental prices that you book directly through the Disney website will cost between $780 and $2,000 per night, depending on where you stay and what time of year you're staying. But you don't have to be a member to stay in these accommodations. Non-DVC members can book rooms straight through Disney like you'd book a standard hotel room, or you can rent points from a DVC member to save a little money. Now, let's talk good neighbor hotels. Disney's partnered with some nearby what they call good neighbor hotels to give you potentially cheaper places to stay and other extra Disney benefits fits like complimentary transportation to the parks and in some cases early theme park entry. For example, the brand new Drury Plaza Hotel Orlando, which is also in the Disney Springs area, you can get a two bedroom suite for around $216 per night. And the Holiday Inn at the Orlando Disney Springs area has a two queen bedroom with a fireworks view from the room's personal balcony and that's about $173. If you stay at the Swan and Dolphin, you will not only get early theme park entry, but also extended evening hours, which are only available to deluxe resort guests. So if you want a much, much, much cheaper option of seeing the Disney fireworks out your window or taking advantage of some of these amenities, look into those good neighbor hotels. All right, now that you know where you're staying and how much you're paying for that, let's talk about park tickets. Much like the Disney resorts, park ticket prices ride a wave of changes throughout the year. Although you can check out the specifics for yourself on the ticket price calendar located on the Disney World website, we've done a chunk of the research for you already. You're welcome. The ticket price ranges that we'll be looking at today are based around a four-day single park ticket for ages 10 and up. If you're planning on going fewer days during your trip, this range will increase, but if you're planning on going more days, this range Range will decrease. Disney likes to reward its guests who want to stay in the parks for a longer amount of time. As they say, the longer you stay, the less you pay per day. If you're planning on only purchasing a one day one park ticket for your upcoming trip because you're planning on prioritizing other parts of Orlando instead of staying in the Disney bubble, then pricing will look a little bit different for you. If you book two or more park tickets, the price range you'll see on the calendar will apply to every park. So if I see a certain day that's priced at 142, I know that no matter what park I make park pass reservations for, it's going to be the same cost across the board. 
However, if I book a one day, one park ticket, the prices will be park based. That means I could essentially be paying more for, say, a visit to Magic Kingdom rather than to Disney's Animal Kingdom. All right, moving on from that disclaimer now, let's look into those four day single park ticket prices. If you're planning a trip super soon, price ranges for January and February will be around 132 to 146 per ticket. The 146 tickets pop up around the week of Valentine's Day, because what's more romantic than Cinderella Castle and a premium ice cream bar? When you enter into spring territory, March through May, prices range between 135 and 142. Typically, prices start to drop back to the 130s again once May rolls around, but will peak once more for Memorial Day weekend. Once summer vacation comes, June to August, prices range between 114 and 142. Now that's a bit more drastic. The $114 tickets that you see here are the cheapest Disney World Park tickets tend to get, and you'll find them once school's back in session around mid to late August. The $142 prices are what you can expect around the 4th of July. Fall prices between September and November also have drastically different ranges around 117 to 155. You're gonna find lots of days in September with that $117 price point, but once Thanksgiving week is here, prices shoot up to that peak $155 per ticket. And then here's the holiday season, December, which sees the highest ticket prices of the year. On Christmas Day, ticket prices are currently marked at $159. If you want to see the parks all lit up and twinkling for the holidays, but you want to try to cut down on those surge prices, try aiming to visit toward the beginning of December when tickets are as low as $144. If you're planning on upgrading your ticket to a park hopper, which will allow you to visit multiple parks starting at 2 p.m. each day, Park hopper prices start at $65 extra per ticket, but starting at the end of this year, park hoppers now also have the ability to fluctuate in price depending on what time of year you visit. So if you think you're gonna want a park hop because you only have a limited time in the parks as is, try factoring in at least an extra 70 to $90 per daily ticket price just in case. All right. I can't wait any longer. We've got to talk about these travel prices you're going to run into in 2023. Travel prices can vary a lot, as you know, and there are a lot of factors to consider when looking at transportation to and from Disney World. So let's look at the difference between traveling to Disney World by car versus by plane. So by car, depending on where you live, it can be cheaper to drive to Disney World than it would cost to fly, obviously, especially if you have a larger family you got to buy tickets for. That being said, gas prices, which are averaging around $3 per gallon range in Florida right now, and nights spent in a hotel along the way, which can be a $100 to $200 per night cost, may end up canceling out those savings. But time is money in Disney World, so if you're driving when you could be enjoying the parks, that could be a cost you're not willing to take on. In order to determine whether putting in the miles will pay off in the long run, it might help to think about how long it'll take you to drive to and from Disney World from where you live. If you end up spending more time in the car than in the parks, then that may not be the best use of your vacation time and funds. Now, by plane, here's where things get bizarre. Flying to Disney World can be cheaper and more convenient for your group. Usually it'll get you there faster and you'll be able to skip over the extra cost of hotel stays during your travels. Unless, of course, there's some sort of flight delay or cancellation, which could happen, especially around the busier and stormier times of the year. But in other instances, flights can actually be more expensive than you bargained for. I looked up a few specific examples for different round trip flights flying into MCO, heading out of the Los Angeles LAX airport and Atlanta's ATL airport around the same travel time frame we're looking at for hotels earlier on, with a departing flight on June 5th and a return flight on June 11th. Before I share these prices, keep in mind that A, flight prices change daily, and B, there are way more flights and airlines out there than what I'll be giving you today. So it's always a good idea to do your research, compare different airlines and airport prices that are at least in a 100 mile radius from your home, and book your flights about 60 days in advance. So not too late, but not too early either. You'll see why here in just a second. Let's start with Delta flights. At LAX, I found a nonstop flight to MCO for around $458 but I found a much cheaper nonstop out of ATL for 288. This price dip is expected. Atlanta's much closer to Orlando than LA is. For American Airlines, prices were fairly similar. You can get a flight from ATL for 371, that does include a stop, and LAX has a nonstop for 488. Again, not a huge difference in price between Delta and American, but you never know, that could change in an instant. Speaking of, Frontier Airlines don't appear at every airport, but when they do show up, they can provide cheaper price points. These are one of those low-cost airlines. 
If you use Frontier to fly out of Atlanta, you can book a nonstop flight for as low as $176. Unfortunately, you're not going to find Frontier planes at LAX, but you will find them in the San Francisco airport, SFO. But don't get too excited yet. The Frontier flights out of SFO are significantly higher than you're going to find out of Atlanta, currently marked at 507 This flight includes one stop in Denver and takes about 12 hours to finally get you to Orlando. All right, so here's the big price shocker. Let's look at Spirit Airlines. Let me set the scene here. Let's say instead of a June flight, I want to book a flight for February 5th to the 11th instead. Cool. So a flight out of LAX is going to range around $148, while a flight out of Atlanta will be more around $48. Yep, you heard me, $48. Not too shabby. But this is more of the price ranges you'd expect to see from a budget airline. Now jump back ahead to June 5th to the 11th. If I get a flight with Spirit out of Atlanta, I'll be paying $814 for a nonstop flight. $814, when if I go in February, it's $48. And it gets even worse at LAX. A Spirit flight with one stop in Houston is going to cost $1,013. So did my computer glitch out on me? Are these prices for real? I don't know, but what I can tell you is that I'm seeing those major jumps happening around busier travel seasons, including the last few days in March, all through April, the last few days of May, and then as far as the eye can see throughout the summer. Does that mean these prices are set in stone? Not at all. Prices around these times could see a major dip for not just Spirit, but for any airline. So here are some ways you can potentially save money on your future flights. First, stay vigilant. Once you book your flights, keep an eye on airfare. If it goes down, you can usually call the airline, rebook online, or apply for that new deal. Two, use your toolbox. Find an online airline search tool that'll do the hard work for you. There are lots out there that can help you track flight prices and notify you when prices are low, and they can give you predictions on when flight costs could go down. Some of our favorites include Hopper, Google Flights, and Skyscanner. Review the point systems too. If you're a frequent flyer with a certain airline or you have a major airline credit card, check to see if you have any points you can redeem for free flights. Every little bit helps. You can minimize your baggage. Those fees do add up. For example, some airlines allow each passenger to bring one free personal item and one free carry-on bag. So if you can fit everything in the carry-on and personal item, you won't have to pay extra for luggage. And five, check out our 50 simple tricks that make travel easier video here on our YouTube channel. That has more travel tips to save money, save time. It's got specific travel hacks that'll help your journey go much more smoothly. All right, now we're not just done with MCO Orlando International Airport just yet. Now that you've landed, how do you get to your hotel from the airport? The most expensive option is the rental car route. Car rentals through Alamo for a standard SUV that can hold a family of five, they're priced around $454 weekly. While car rentals through Hertz for a large sedan that can also hold a family of five is around $400 weekly. Granted, investing in a rental car will give your family the freedom to drive around property whenever you want, wherever you want, instead of relying solely on the schedules of Disney's complimentary transportation services. They'll also let you drive all over Orlando if you want to go to other theme parks. But keep in mind that parking fees at the theme parks do apply, so you'll be paying for daily parking on top of what you're already paying for your rental car, unless you're a member of an amenity group that keeps you from paying for parking. But a rental car isn't your only option. You can choose instead to reserve a seat on airport shuttle services, Sunshine Flyer or Mirrors Connect. Sunshine Flyer costs $39 per adult, $22 per child for a standard round trip, while the Mirrors Connect is $32 per adult and $27 per child for also a standard round trip. You need to book your seat on one of these shuttles after you figured out your resort stay and your flight by going to either the Mirrors Connect or Sunshine Flyer websites. And then there's a rideshare option where you can pay for either an Uber or Lyft or a taxi to come get you for a more private and potentially faster ride to your hotel. Whether a rideshare is going to be cheaper than a ride aboard the Sunshine Fly or a Mirrors Connect is about as predictable as the flip of a coin. Rideshares from MCO and on into the Disney bubble can be as low as $35, but if you time your pickup around lunch or rush hour, those prices could hike up to $75+. Plus. Okay, now I'm done talking about flights and airports. Let's move on to my favorite topic of them all. Time to talk food. Who's hungry? Talking about an average price range for a family to eat around Disney World is pretty tricky to pin down, and that's because prices for each of the restaurants are really, really different from one another. Good thing we can break them down into multiple categories. Quick and counter service dining, aka the fast food of Disney World, is going to be your cheapest meal option. Usually prices for meals here for adults range around $20 or less, and sometimes lots less. A few unique quick service options that you'll be able to find around the parks include Satuli Canteen in Disney's Animal Kingdom, Docking Bay 7 in Hollywood Studios, Sunshine Seasons in Epcot, and Sleepy Hollow Refreshments in Magic Kingdom. 
Also, Columbia Harbor House, that's one of our favorites. Plus, lots more. Then you've got your sit-down table service restaurants. The price ranges for these types of restaurants can vary significantly too. On the one hand, you might be able to pay for items a la carte, like you can at Skipper Canteen in Magic Kingdom or Sci-Fi Dine-In at Hollywood Studios. Or you might have to pay a prefix menu price, which means you'll be paying for a multi-course meal with traditionally an appetizer, an entree, and a dessert, sold at one fixed price. Sometimes prefix prices can give you a pretty sweet deal. The prefix menu featured in Trails End at Disney's Fort Wilderness will give you a family-style skillet with cornbread, salad, pecan-smoked brisket, smoked chicken, pulled pork, roasted potatoes, green beans, buttered corn on the cob, and chipotle barbecue and Carolina mustard barbecue sauce, and a mason jar dessert trio, all for $31.99 per adult. However, some prefix meals will cost you a pretty penny. At Space 220 in Epcot, a prefix dinner consists of one appetizer, one entree, one dessert for a grand total of $79 per adult. To be fair, you're really paying more for the atmosphere here than anything else, but you can find a cheaper prefix menu for lunch at $55 bucks per adult, or you can book the Space 220 lounge instead and purchase cocktails and appetizers a la carte for a potentially even cheaper dining option during your space adventure. Next, you got character dining, which are dining experiences where Disney characters get to meet and greet with guests throughout the restaurant. If you book a character dining experience for dinner at a restaurant like Chef Mickey's in the Contemporary Resort or Tusker House in Disney's Animal Kingdom, expect to pay around $59 per adult. However, if you go the breakfast character dining route instead for either of these restaurants, the price drops down to 45 bucks. This will give you a different assortment of food, but if your group is more concerned about meeting the Fab Five than what food's gonna wind up on your plate, then breakfast might be the better way to go, and cheaper. And now for the most expensive dining venture of the bunch, signature dining locations. This can be boiled down to high quality dining at a high price. Some signature dining, much like the regular table service around property, have a la carte options that can help you cut down costs, like La Cellier Steakhouse in Epcot and Hollywood Brown Derby and Disney's Hollywood Studios. But if you run across a prefix signature dining experience, expect to be paying big bucks. This is especially true if you go the ultra fancy dining experience route for restaurants like Monsieur Paul and Takumi Tei in Epcot. Monsieur Paul, located in the France Pavilion of World Showcase, costs $195 per person. Takumi Te, located in the Japan Pavilion, starts at $150 per person and actually goes much higher than that. Victoria and Albert's over in Disney's Grand Floridian really takes the cake when it comes to fancy pants dining. You have three dining options at Victoria and Albert's. The main dining room, which is going to be $235 per guest. The Queen Victoria room, that's $375 per guest. Or the Victoria and Albert's chef's table, that's $425. 25 per guest and super exclusive. Now, these are all base prices. You can further enhance these already enhanced dining experiences with extras like wine pairings around $150 to $200 extra, depending on your dining room experience, zero proof cocktail pairings priced at $110, extra courses or other enhancements, those can range between $35 and $200 plus. So the way that you dine in Disney World and the amount you decide you want to budget for food is all up to you. But if you plan on being around property for the week, you'll more than likely want to make 80 to 90% of your meals fast food specific. And don't worry, there's lots of good fast food, even healthy fast food. We've got a whole video called I Only Ate Fast Food in Disney World and You Should Too, where we've got a lot of really, really good suggestions. So go check that out next. Now, you might even want to go the extra mile and make all of your food fast food, or you can save even more money by packing your own food and skipping the extra fast food price tag in general. Several guests like to pack easy to carry and easy to preserve lunch and dinner options in their park bags like sandwiches, mixed veggies, trail mix, protein bars, and anything else that A doesn't leak, doesn't need to be heated in a microwave, doesn't need to be kept frozen, and isn't being carried in a glass container. You can either bring these foods from home if you're pre-gamed with some grocery shopping before your trip, or you can use a grocery delivery app like Instacart or have groceries delivered to your resort when or after you arrive. Even with those grocery app delivery fees, ordering groceries for the week of your trip can be much cheaper alternative to buying quick service food every single day for every single meal. Just make sure if you order any perishable items that the hotel room you choose comes with a fridge. For more Disney World meal budgeting tips, check out our video, Can We Eat for Under $20 a Day? in Disney World. That's on our YouTube channel as well. With all that being said, I still recommend booking maybe two to three sit-down restaurant reservations just to try out some of the more elevated dining options in Disney World. Or if food is more than fuel to you and you truly want to experience the creme de la creme of Disney dining, 
a signature restaurant could be the perfect way to celebrate a big occasion, like an anniversary, engagement, graduation, honeymoon, or other celebration-worthy life event. All right, who's ready to tack on a little extra pizzazz? Much like you can add enhancements, quote unquote, to your signature dining meal to make the experience extravagant, you can also add extra activities or premium planning options to sprinkle some extra spice and convenience onto your hopefully already magical trip. At Magic Kingdom and Disney's Hollywood Studios, after-hours events have just returned to the parks for certain nights, giving guests who feel like the parks are just way too crowded during the day the chance to experience them at night with much lower crowd levels and very, very short ride lines. It feels like a ghost town in there. It is amazing and kind of scary. After-hours events range between $129 to $159 per person. You can always double up and pay for both a regular single-day ticket and an after-hours ticket, but since after-hours will still get you into the parks as early as 7 p.m. or at least a few hours before they close, and the events themselves last from 12.30 a.m. to 1 a.m., you may just want to go the after-hours route and skip the regular park ticket entirely if you don't mind not getting your picture in front of Cinderella Castle while the sun's still up. I personally think this is a great deal and this is exactly what I would do if I were planning a week-long trip to Disney World. Wake up late, go to brunch, spend the day by the pool, and then go to After Hours at Hollywood Studios and ride Rise of the Resistance as many times as you want. Ever since Disney Genie Plus was introduced to the park since 2021, we've gone all Hamlet in deciding whether this premium planning tool is worth it in the long run. To Genie Plus or not to Genie Plus, that is the question for everybody, right? Disney Genie Plus is a paid service starting at $15 per person per day that lets you make one Lightning Lane selection at a time. Lightning Lanes, because in case you don't know, give you a return time that allows you to skip a ride's standby line. You can continue to select more return times one at a time throughout the day. But if you don't find a Lightning Lane for a ride you're wanting to skip the line for, listed under the Genie Plus options, you may be able to find it in the Individual Lightning Lane options instead. Yes, it gets more complicated. Individual Lightning Lanes are reserved for the especially popular rides at Disney World. With this pay-per-ride feature, you can pay to skip the standby line at one individual ride. Now, there are a lot of different Disney Genie Plus and Individual Lightning Lane tips you can use to maximize your time and money, which you can check out on our Ultimate Genie Plus guide video. But for now, let's break down the questions you're gonna wanna ask yourself before investing in either or both of these My Disney Experience planning tools. Number one, how busy will it be during your visit? If you're planning on traveling during historically non-busy seasons for Disney, then Lightning Lanes may not be as necessary as they would be if you were planning on traveling during a jam-packed season, like Christmas or Labor Day weekend, or one of the Run Disney race events. That being said, since both Genie Plus and Individual Lightning Lanes have a surge price system, both services will cost less if you purchase them during non-peak times, and more if you purchase them at super peak times. At their highest, we've seen Genie Plus cost $29 per day per person around the holiday season. So do you need both services or just one? If you want to buy Genie Plus, you do not have to pay for individual lightning lanes and vice versa. For example, let's say you're visiting Epcot and you want to prioritize getting on Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. Good choice. I love it too. This backwards launch coaster is listed as an individual lightning lane. So you can choose to get up around 7 a.m. the day of your Epcot visit, purchase an individual lightning lane for Cosmic Rewind, and only Cosmic Rewind, and then choose to wait in the main lines for all the other rides without forking over the extra 15 to 29 bucks per person for Genie Plus access. But you're more than welcome to purchase both if you'd prefer to cut down your wait times for pretty much all the rides as much as you possibly can. Another thing to consider, which parks are you visiting? There's a reason Magic Kingdom and Hollywood Studios have after-hours events. They are the busiest Disney World parks by far, so people are willing to spend money to go after they close. But if you don't want to spend a good chunk of your park days waiting in line after line, and you really do want to see these parks during the day instead of just at night when the shows won't be going on, Genie Plus and individual lightning lanes can be a major life and time saver. But for the most part, using Genie Plus for Epcot and Animal Kingdom may not be as worth the cost unless you're planning on visiting Disney World right after Christmas when pretty much every ride line across all the parks can be a 60 to 180 minute wait, which definitely isn't the norm. Much like you can pick and choose if you want to pay for Genie Plus or individual lightning lanes or both, you can also choose how many days you want to purchase Genie Plus for. Even on a week-long vacation, you can choose one day of Genie Plus just to test the waters, and if you decide it's not your cup of tea, you can choose to not pay for it the rest of your vacation. 
then the fourth thing to consider, will you take the time to study up on this service before your trip? Simply put, if you don't want to invest the extra time in learning how to get the most out of this premium service, it could end up feeling like a giant waste of money. I'm laughing because Bria put in this script, Mun Muns? I don't think I would ever say Mun Muns, but it's a giant waste of Mun Muns too. That's why we've got so many posts about all the different constantly updated Lightning Lane tips and tricks so you can make sure you're ready to maximize the purchase and know how to work it before you get to the parks. Don't worry, we got your back. And your Mun Muns, apparently. There are so many different enhanced extras trademark for you to add on to your trip, ranging from unique tours and dessert parties, culinary classes, recreational activities. The list goes on and on, and you can find them all along with their price ranges on the Enchanting Extras Collection webpage on the Disney World website. Some extras won't break the bank, like Epcot's Behind the Seeds Tour that starts at $35 per person and is super fun, but some will take a little more saving, like the Emirates Patisserie Cake Decorating Experience at Disney Springs, that one starts at $199. Again, you don't have to add any of these extras to your trip, but if you find one that tickles your fancy, you won't want to forget to make reservations and budget room for these tours or classes. And since we've entered the Disney Springs scene, let's talk souvenirs. It's hard to go to Disney World without leaving your luggage feeling just a bit heavier than it did when you got there. But how much do some of the more popular souvenirs of Disney World cost? Right now, the 100 Years of Wonder merchandise celebrating the Walt Disney Company's 100-year anniversary is all the rage. You've got the Mickey Mouse and Friends Disney 100 Spirit Jersey for $84.99, the Minnie Mouse Disney 100 Loungefly Mini Backpack for $78, Minnie Mouse Disney 100 Ear Headband for $39.99, the Disney 100 Donald and Daisy Duck pin for $14.99, and lots more. I know, it's all pretty pricey. I mean, some of these items can be just as expensive as those enhanced extra experiences, if not more so. But you may be able to find Disney Park-specific souvenirs, including Disney 100 merchandise, before your trip on the Shop Disney website for a discounted price. If one of their many, many online sales is going on while you're browsing the online store, definitely take advantage of it. Or if you want more affordable and more unique Disney tees or sweatshirts to wear around the parks, well, you can always check out the DFB Store website for our designs. Go to merch.dfbstore.com. Those will highlight favorite Disney rides and snacks and lands and holidays, and they won't cost you $90 per swagger. And then you get to support your favorite YouTube channel. All right, so let's answer the question that's more than likely been burning a hole in your brain. How much in total should you be planning on saving for your 2023 Disney World vacation? Yikes, kind of hard to pin that one down. If you stuck with us through this whole video, you know, there are so many different variables at play here, but let's see what we can conjure up for you. Just to give you the roughest of rough estimates, let's jump back to the month of June. For a family of four traveling in June, week long Disney World getaway, a vacation package, including a value resort and a single day theme park ticket for all four parks for everybody, that's gonna cost you around $3,900. If you decide to fly instead of drive, airfare could cost around $1,010 for a round-trip flight, depending on where you're flying from, with a standard Mirrors Connect round-trip ride to and from your resort costing an extra $118. For food, you could plan on budgeting back $1,212 if you're wanting to do mostly fast food meals and maybe two sit down options thrown in the mix. And if you decide to invest in Genie Plus for all four park days, you're looking at an estimated $240 extra for Lightning Lane access. And that makes our rough grand total come out to be around $6,478. Now again, there are so many factors that could decrease or increase this price exponentially. You could travel during a slower time of year to see value resort prices drop, or you could decide to drive instead of fly. You could pack lunches for your park days, or you could splurge on a rather gourmet meal. And you could decide to throw Genie Plus out completely and rely instead on using early theme park entry to help get you in line for your favorite rides early on, and hopefully skipping the bulk of the wait using that method instead. Every trip budget is gonna look way different than someone else's. That being said, we can help you save money where it counts, so let's look into some new ways to save in 2023 right now. You can apply for new discounts. Recently, Disney announced new promotional offers that could save guest money on food in Disney World. This allows guests to book a vacation package where they're gonna receive a free gift card that can only exclusively be used in Disney World restaurants. It's not really a return of the Disney dining plan, but it's about the closest thing we've seen since the dining plan was put on hold in 2020. These dining cards range in savings based on your resort type and when you decide to visit. 
For example, value resort stays will get $35 per night for the whole group if the arrival date is between June 25th and June 30th or July 11th and the 31st, and $50 per night if your arrival date is between July 1st and the 10th or August 1st and September 14th. The Lux Resort stays get $125 to $150 per night, and it just keeps accumulating if you stay more nights. More Disney World Resort discounts were also recently revealed on the Special Offers, Deals, and Discounts page and include some summer savings like 25% off deluxe resorts, 20% off moderates, and 10 to 15% off values. So reach out to a travel agent because tracking down discounts to make sure you're always getting the best deals on your vacation can be exhausting. We always recommend Small World Vacations. They are fantastic. They've been doing this a long time and I know Sue who runs the company. I've known her for about 10 years now. She is absolutely phenomenal. And their services are completely free to use. So if you'd like to reach out and ask for a free quote, I'll link the Small World Vacations info down in the description below. You can also travel on weekdays instead of weekends. This strategy is isn't foolproof, but it can be a great way to find major surge price decreases without strictly having to travel during a specific non-peak season. Prices for hotels, tickets, Genie Plus, even certain flights can dip during the weekdays. But because weekends tend to be an easier time for people to get out there and vacation, since you won't have to worry about taking any vacation days off, the parks tend to be the most crowded and the most expensive on weekends. Tuesday to Thursday prices are normally cheaper than what you'll find on Fridays to Sundays. And Mondays are kind of an oddball day. Prices can be cheaper, but they can also spike for airfare since the start of the work week is a more popular time for business travelers to book flights. Another way to save is by joining those membership programs. Disney Springs is all about the food and experience savings. Since many of the businesses in the shopping district are owned and operated by third parties and not Disney, they're able to use membership and rewards programs to help save you money on dining and activities. We have every single Disney Springs savings option listed in our new 2023 DFB Guide to Walt Disney World Dining eBook that's featured on dfbstore.com. So if you're looking for a complete list, head over there and grab that guide. Here's a little teaser of savings though to hold you over for now. If you're an AMC Stubbs member, their Discount Tuesdays are available every week for discounts on movie tickets. You can join the Earl of Sandwich loyalty program for rewards, a birthday brownie, and other potential discounts throughout the year. And if you sign up for the Patina Restaurant Group subscription list, which is free, you'll receive offers and deals, as well as a $30 to $50 offer for your birthday. And Patina Restaurant Group includes locations like Morimoto Asia, The Edison, Maria Enzo's Ristorante in Disney Springs, and Via Napoli and Tudo Italia in Epcot. Nice, right? Again, we've got the complete list of savings and memberships in our new 2023 dining guide, so make sure to type in the code YouTube for some extra savings on your purchase if you head over there to dfbstore.com. And of course you could stay home. Um, excuse me, AJ, what kind of saving tip is this? Honestly, it's the ultimate savings tip. If those Disney World price tags are gonna have you freaking out during the entire vacation, then every little blip and blunder that pops up during your trip, and there will be some, is gonna be 10 times more stressful for you. No vacation is perfect, and if you think it should be, judging by the thousands of dollars you're shoveling into it, then you may wanna hold off on this hefty investment. Now, your trip can still be amazing, you can still invest in the vacation of a lifetime, hiccups and all, and still have the best time ever, but if you're already losing sleep over all those dollar signs, it's not worth the extra worry. Disney World will be there next year. Take as much time as you need to save so that you can feel comfortable with an investment like this later on, even if that means holding off for a year or two before you hit up the most magical place on earth. In the meantime, you can always plan to take some vacations that aren't thousand dollar investments, like mountain hikes, beach days, little Airbnb getaways near a hustling and bustling city. It can still be fun, you can still make memories without stressing yourself out. So whether you want to travel on a budget or live in the lap of luxury during your upcoming Disney World vacation, both trip styles can still provide you with a whole lot of fun. Keep checking back in with us as we continue to find new ways to save and uncover new enchanting extras, quote unquote, that you may want to squeeze into your future itineraries. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.